Well, welcome everyone. Um, my name is Diane Smith and um, I work in marketing here at Riverwoods in Exeter. And um, normally we would be doing this person, this event in person, um, hosting a in-person event with a luncheon. Unfortunately, you know, we can't do that now. So this is our best way of being able to share this important information. It's always a sellout event um, because it's such an important topic. None of us want to let go of things that we have. There's an emotional component. There's a physical component. So we recognize all of those things. So we want to guide you, particularly if you're starting the process or, or you're more recently on the wait list. We don't want you to wait until you get that call and then suddenly have to do it quickly. Mm -hmm. So we're gonna to try to guide you. Ellen's gonna to try to give you some good, good pointers and how you might be able to start letting go of some of those things now. And I remember once a, a downsizer came and spoke and said, letting go of something opens you up for something new. And I liked that because it was a little bit on a positive note saying, okay, yes, it's hard to let go of this, but I'm going to be open to something new in my life. And so um, you can look forward to whatever that something new is for you. So you can screen uh, move forward, Ellen. Mm -hmm. All right. Okay, so a couple of housekeeping notes. Um, you are on mute. But as I mentioned, we welcome questions. So um, submit all your questions through the Q&A at the bottom of your screen. It is being recorded. So we will send out the, the presentation to you. And as always, every time Riverwoods does a webinar or a seminar, we welcome your suggestions, how we can be better, something that you might want us to present to you. If you have an idea about a future product pro topic, please let us know. We want to make sure that we're um, informing you in all the ways that are important as you transition into your next chapter. Next. So um, a little bit before I turn it over to Alan, a little bit about River Woods. For those of you, you that do not know, we uh, these are our communities. Um, River Woods is, is Exeter is where it all started over 25 years ago. We have Birch Hill, which is in Manchester, and uh, Riverwoods Durham, which opened up about a year ago. So three separate communities, three separate marketing offices, but all part of the same family. We all have the same mission in terms of making sure that you can secure um, a, a, a life, uh, a comfortable lifestyle, and guaranteeing long-term care. Um, so founded by two visionary women, which if you have never received our packet, we always like to share that amazing women who came up with this concept. So just a little bit about, you hear the acronym CCRC, we, that's Continuing Care Retirement Community. For those of you that don't know, it is an insurance product. Um, so we are the life version of long-term care. So you basically are prepaying for any potential assisted living or skill needs um, that you might have as we age. Um, a portion of your month monthly fee is tax deductible because you are prepaying. So you need to be independent when you come in here. Um, we take care of all the heavy lifting for you. So all your maintenance is taken care of, transportation services, full range of programs, educational, musical, um, lots of different ways to socialize. Uh, but most importantly, you have a security blanket for your long-term care, along with being in control of what your, what your life is gonna look like as we age. So that's what we are. So now I'm gonna introduce Ellen. Ellen um, is, uh, represents Wayforth. She is a seasoned client experience manager, transition specialist. Um, Wayforth is proudly an A plus accredited by the National Association of Senior Move Managers. And I can say from my own experience that residents that have used her services have been incredibly pleased with how 
It has eased the process of moving in. Ellen has spent the last 11 years working with clients who feel overwhelmed with the prospect of planning. She is keenly aware that there are many emotions and attachments to possessions and the best way to streamline the downsizing process is through planning, keeping you in charge. Simply put, working with a move manager gives you peace of mind. Ellen is a respected speaker on downsizing and moving to senior living communities like, like River Woods, as well as a National Association of Senior Move Managers Annual Conference. So you're not the only ones that are overwhelmed no. <laughs> by this process. So, um, so you can see that there's a huge, huge need for what Ellen does. And so given that, we're gonna turn it over to her and um, let her talk a little bit about what she does. And, and uh, so welcome, Ellen. Great, thank you so much, Diane. I appreciate the warm introduction and I'm really happy to be here with everyone today. Um, I can't believe the turnout. This is absolutely phenomenal. Um, and we'd like nothing more for everyone to walk away with a nugget or two or three, um, you know, from this presentation today. Uh, you know, it, it is much, much like anything, you know, uh, I think of the, the story of the book by uh, Marie Kondo, the, the uh, life-size, uh, life-changing magic of tidying up. You know, there's so much in that book, but you walk away with some nuggets that work for you. And that's what I want uh, for everybody today. Just take away what works best for you. And so there's no doubt that we've all had to adapt to quite a bit um, in, in um, this last year. And, um, and while we'd love to be with you in person, we'll share our, you know, our knowledge and, and uh, virtually with you in our right sizing tips and move preparation. And we call this um, presentation beyond resolutions, um, uh, you know, kind of right sizing your, your life because the goals we set um, are often are broken with time. The ones that we set in the beginning of the year. So it's, it's as if we set ourselves up for failure and we wanna look beyond the resolutions to give you tips and advice to create positive and lasting change. And so it's our hope that this presentation will give you some tips to get started and then guide your process and open up opportunities towards your goal of living your new life at River uh, Woods Exeter. So I have been in the industry for nearly uh, 12 years and most of our clients often tell us that the number one hurdle that they face in, is in planning their upcoming move is because of what? All of their possessions. And all of the things of, their, of your lives and the word that we you know, don't like to use, but we will, stuff. And I'm gonna bet that if we took a poll of, uh, there would be many of you who have been in your homes for 30, 40, even 50 plus years. And in that time you've accumulated a lifetime of possessions. So, you know, what we, what we say is that every five years or so, we develop a new life cycle or a new lifestyle. And, and we're all different, but cycles range from our college years to marriage, different career adventures, kids, uh, family we've supported, grandkids, and the list goes on. And every time we go through these cycles, we often accumulate the past cycle because we don't want to give it up. We, we, start, we just start to say, oh, I'll get back to biking or fly fishing, but our life cycles interrupt or end an interest in an associated, in, in its associated possessions. And I, you might, we might hear someone say, I'm, I'm not gonna give away baby toys or, or these research, research papers because someday it just might, I might have someone who might need these. Has anyone had that ex excuse before? So our first rule of thumb is if you have to put an excuse in front of why you're keeping something, you probably don't need it. The what if, or maybe I, so on to the process. We know that moving is the third most stressful thing anyone can do in a lifetime. We also know that clearing away the clutter and moving the essentials that bring you joy is, what, what, uh, is, is the way to begin your new phase of a life unburdened by your possessions. You wanna focus on your, your activities, your new life, your clutter-free lifestyle. So we acknowledge that this process, is going, process of going through your homes can be very difficult, but our job is to help you understand how we can simplify the process so that you can move on and begin enjoying that lifestyle that you want at Riverwoods Exeter. The interesting thing is that downsizing is really trending right now. 
there's even a few TV shows that maybe you've seen them. So you'll be lead, leading conversations with some of the tips that we'll share today. So let's, let's look at downsizing as a fresh start. And let's talk about how to prioritize and capture what matters most in your life. So let's look ahead. It's important to pause and recognize the impact that COVID has had on all of us. And being at home has given us time to take stock in what we need and we don't need. And although we promised ourselves we'd begin downsizing, I wonder how many of us have actually done that. Maybe it's given us the opportunity to take stock on an emotional level. And we've come a long way in these past months with most of us being fully vaccinated, including much of our way full of staff. So we look forward together with you so that you're all ready for the possibilities, um, you know, for the possibilities that lie ahead. Uh, but many of many people, our clients will say, I'm just not ready, I'm, I'm not ready. And what we want to do is get ready. Even if it might not be your timing or you haven't found the exact apartment, we still want you to be ready because it's when you're ready that makes you ready for all the possibilities. And even if you don't have to, and if you don't have to pause, let's say to settle your things, you'll be ready to make the move and enjoy all the amenities that Riverwoods Exeter has to offer. So let's look at today's agenda. We'll define six forms of clutter and we'll see if any of you can relate to these. I know I can relate to many of them. And we'll talk about some downsizing tips and then we'll talk about where it all goes. And it's really easy for us to talk about getting rid of things, but let's look at some options for these possessions. And then lastly, we'll talk about our health and safety protocols in conjunction with Riverwoods Exeter um, that we follow. And um, we certainly wanna keep you as safe uh, and healthy as possible. So on, on to the clutter. So does anyone have trash that have trash that might be masquerading as clutter? The expiration, the, uh, the expired medications or makeup, uh, the projects that you never quite finished or uh, who has a workbench? Do you have something needing repair that you promised that you'd get yourself to, you'd get yourself, uh, to fixing? That's often uh, trash masquerading as clutter, that junk, that, the junk mail that piles up. And just take a look at these, see if you can relate to any of them here. There's also clutter that, that is clutter without a home. All those magazines and articles you've dog-eared that you'll someday get to. And there's that word again, someday. In our business, someday means never. Um, so we'll, we'll get to that. But newspapers or paperwork uh, and mail cluttering your countertops. Some of that trash, um, you know, just need, you need to get rid of and just get a system to organize and free you from that clutter. So when you receive mail, stand over the recycling bin and immediately get rid of that unneeded junk mail and separate your bills and find a purposeful place that will allow you to follow up accordingly. The third form of clutter is abundance clutter. Does this look like anyone's closet? I know it's an, I know it's an exaggerated example. But it's when people store a lot of items that you think someday you might possibly maybe need. So these items are often items that we're putting excuses around. The rule of thumb, no more excuses to keep things you're not using. Let's look at this pantry. If those pantries are overstocked, like the clothing closet, and we don't keep them organized, we'll forget about what's in the back. Sort through those expired items like spices or you know, any, any of the, the food items that have been sitting there for quite a while and get rid of them. Um, get rid of the items that you think you might someday possibly use and keep the ones you will use. Another um, rule of thumb in downsizing is put down those membership cards. Many of you have membership cards um, with wholesale providers like Costco and BJ's. And that's a whole lot of bulk coming into your home. And ask yourself, you know, do you really need all of that bulk? And even something like toilet paper is often cheaper at the uh, grocery store. So challenge yourself to tuck away the cards and focus on what's going out rather than what's coming in. The next form of clutter is bargain clutter. Has anyone purchased something just because it was on sale? 
a really good sale, you just couldn't pass up. I know I'm guilty of that. So not pointing fingers. And uh, I, I think just because it's free or on sale doesn't necessarily mean it's something you need to bring into your home. And I really challenge you to think about if you, you know, if you, uh, if you don't need it or use it or wear it or really love it, is it really a bargain? So challenge yourself to resist that free coffee mug. Just say no. The rule of thumb is don't take the free stuff. And I know it's hard. And I know you think you might possibly use it, but rarely do we find a purpose for that free stuff. You're actually taking it because it's free and it's free for a reason. So typically people are passing it on to you because they don't want it. So another form of clutter is aspirational clutter. See if anybody can relate to this. Does anyone have a hobby or a project that they thought they'd do someday? Knitting um, or working out with the fancy weights? So I'll go ahead and confess. So before I had kids, and that alone should, you know, and my kids are all grown, so that's really the humor in this story. But before I had kids, I loved to refinish small pieces of furniture. And I was in the middle of a project when I had my first child, Catherine. And I said, I'll get, get back to refinishing that coffee table. And then 14 months later, I had twin girls, Heather and Kelly, mm -hmm. and three children. And 30 years later, that coffee table is still sitting in my garage. Mm -hmm. So every time I passed it, the coffee table was a weight on my shoulders that I hadn't gotten back to it. So finally, I said, I'm going back to the, get that, that refinished. And when I did, I found that I didn't like the cold dampness of the garage. And that didn't bother me before, but it did now. And I also am wearing glasses now, which I wasn't before. And because my eyesight had declined and they kept running down my nose as I was sanding away. So it wasn't quite as enjoyable it was, you know, way back when. So I freed myself of the weight and obligation that I thought, and, and I really thought I'd feel bad, but I actually felt good donating that piece of uh, furniture to Habitat for Humanity Restore. And then here's another story. Uh, we had a friend who aspired to be a runner, and she walked, she walked every single day, but she really wanted to be a runner. So what did she do? She bought, a, you know, the fitness tracker bracelet, a nice outfit, some new sneakers, and a treadmill. And you know what happened? She's still an avid walker today. Mm -hmm. So does anyone have a treadmill or an exercise machine that looks like this? Because these machines are not clothes hangers and they're not drying racks. And we have the best of intentions like my friend did who wanted to become the runner, runner, but it just doesn't always stick. So we need to ask ourselves, am I using it or do I need it? Do I love it? It's, we can all be guilty of it here and there. And so the uh, last form of clutter is sentimental clutter. And these are the items that friends and loved ones have given you. It's your memorabilia, your photos, your collectibles that you've collected over the years. And we'll talk about a few ways to downsize your treasures, but let's acknowledge that it can be the most difficult and time consuming area to address. Sentimental clutter, it comes in another form called obligatory, uh, obligatory clutter. And let me give you an example. We have a colleague whose sister-in-law gave her a lantern. She really hated the lantern, but every time her sister-in-law came, she put the lantern out. So a few Christmases later, you know what happened? Her sister gave her the matching lantern. Mm -hmm. So finally, she had to admit to herself, I don't love this lantern. I need to let it go. And so she freed herself of that obligation of having to keep it, put it out every year, put it back away and keep it stored. And so even when it's hard, when we downsize and challenge ourselves to look at items in different ways, it can actually be freeing. So I'm gonna give you some quick tips on downsizing, but keep in mind the forms of clutter that we just talked about and plan to target those areas that are the hot, spot, the hot spots for you. So <clears throat> start now. It's never too early to start to prepare for your future. And start small. One drawer at a time is fine. Go to the least emotional area first. Don't start with what clutter? We just talk about, right, that, that sentimental clutter. 
So don't start with your photos or memorabilia because you will be overwhelmed and you'll, your ability to get through that task in a time, timely manner will be lost. Start with a junk drawer or a linen closet, and this will allow you to gain some momentum and get that going. So how do you keep, um, so how do you keep a schedule and progress moving forward? I mean, set a timer. I'm a big fan of, of timers. Um, for those of you with cell phones or Apple watches, timers are abundant. Use a microwave timer if you need be, or your egg timer, but set a realistic goal, maybe 10 minutes, 20 minutes, whatever works for you, just to clear out that junk drawer and stay focused from distractions and check that box off. And then also consider finding a buddy to downsize with. Um, an example here, my brother, again, a run, all these, all this running examples, but my brother's a runner and he runs all year long, even in the frigid winter months. Um, and he said there were cold, dark mornings that he would, would like to turn over and fall back to sleep, but he knows that he has his friend, his running buddy will be out by the mailbox and he doesn't want to let him down. So find someone, a fr you know, a friend to hold you accountable in your downsizing projects, just as my brother did with his running buddy. And then lastly, set an appointment with yourself. Write it on the calendar, March 12th, you know, downsizing, 9 to 11, 9 to 9.30, junk drawer, mugs, Tupperware. Get, get that on the calendar. So let's move on to uh, 10 downsizing tips. Give me one second here. All right, so the first tip is have a plan. And it's never too early to create a floor plan if you haven't already. You know, talk with uh, Diane uh, and Adele about prospective floor plans you'd like. And even if it's not available yet, you know, we can do a floor plan for you because uh, here's the key to doing that floor plan. You'll be able to identify or at least narrow down which furniture pieces will be moving forward with you. Not only do you identify the furniture, but you can also identify what is going in and on the furniture. And it's gonna give you an opportunity to consider repurposing pieces of furniture. I'll give you an example. Um, we've had several clients that have, that have uh, dining room hutches. We've taken the top of the hutch off and used the bottom for TV console. They really liked the storage underneath, uh, but it was just a way to, to keep the, the bottom portion and put it to, to good use in a different way. So just the exercise of doing some floor planning is just one of the most important things you can do because that floor plan becomes your roadmap and you can focus on what's going with you rather than what's not. And from the floor planning, this will springboard you to creating a timeline uh, of target dates and we'll work with you to develop a customized plan. And, you know, when we create a calendar of dates, it, while it can be daunting. It, it's uncanny the relief people feel when they set those target dates. Fill in the dates you know, and then we work our way backwards. And the schedule can and definitely will be fluid, but setting an initial timeline will discipline you and create some momentum. And through all of the process that we just talked about, it'll set that framework. Um, but do what you can and don't be afraid to solicit help from an expert. And certainly Riverwoods Exeter has brought us to the table, so there's ease in the process. Because um, you know, if you do, if you don't properly plan, you might just uh, end up a little stuck in the process. Then everything might not fit. And the move day is very dynamic, but without proper planning, it can end up costing you more time and money than you bargained for. Downsizing tip number two, start with those unemotional areas for two reasons. It's faster, you'll get practice and momentum in your downsizing. And because <clears throat> it's, the unemotional, um, it's the unemotional, you can um, make decisions to release an item easier. And it's good practice for when you get to, uh, get to the sentimental areas. So exam some examples of less emotional areas, the linen closet. Here's a rule of thumb. I'm gonna sprinkle some of these here and there today. So, Two sets of towels per bathroom, one in the bathroom, one in your linen closet. Two sets of sheets per bed, one on the bed and one in the linen closet. Now, obviously there's gonna be some exceptions. And I'll admit, I have a third set of flannel sheets that I love in the winter months. So do what works best for you. 
Another area might be your Tupperware cabinet. I know mine could use a little work right now, but take the entire cabinet of Tupperware out and that rule of thumb, find a staging area to see that whole collection. So whether it's Tupperware or ties or coats or whatever it is, you wanna see that, that whole collection. Bring those items to a countertop or a table. And I'm sure many of these are tucked in the back of the cabinet and never get used or see the light of day. So pull them all out, match your lids and bottoms, toss the broken, warped, discolored and mismatched and return the ones you'll use regularly. Um, and ha even have a small donation box available, even in each room uh, to pass along to those in, needs, in need. And the same method can be applied to your sock drawer. Get rid of the ones that you don't have the mates to and that you're not using, but you know, focus on the ones you will use. So another great area is pots and pans. Downsizing is as much about the emotional aspects as the physical. And reflect on your new lifestyle at Riverwoods Exeter. And remember, while you may have been cooking for the masses in the past, it's your turn to be catered to. Remember that aspirational clutter? Do you think you're going to be cooking lobsters for 20 people? Uh, or are you excited to leave it behind to attend a summer lobster outing with your new neighbors? So think about, you know, do you really need that large stock pot or the 25 lobster crackers? Keeping a sampling of the small and medium saucepans will probably, probably do you just fine. All right, so downsizing tip number three, you have to ask yourself the tough questions. Remember, we're relating this exercise to your new and exciting community lifestyle. So do, you know, do I use it? Do I need it? Do I love it? Is it useful? Does it bring me joy? And I'm going to add another um, category. Has it served its purpose? And as our example with the stock pot, there are certain items that served us well in the past, but just not are not a part of our new beginnings. And when we're with you and downsizing with you or coaching you, we're going to ask these questions. And we've had instances when a, when a client will say they need an item and then they'll look at us and laugh at their own reasoning. And it can be a fun process. And the one that may just, in a process that just may need an extra set of hands or an unbiased third party like us to help guide the decision-making process. So these are the questions that'll give your process consistency and, uh, and meaning. The, <clears throat> Tip number four, create sorting categories. And decluttering is a funny thing. Once you open it and start to see the things that have been hidden for 10, 20 years, you get a renewed interest in it. And you just start beginning with those, you know, those excuses again. And so we just want to make sure that, you know, that those what ifs aren't coming up and, oh, ooh, God, what if I, I, I got to have this? Or what if I might be able to use this someday? And then just, again, you start with the excuses. So look to someone who can guide you through the process, or you can take some of the tips that you know we give you today to keep you disciplined and you want to guard against getting caught with these second thoughts as you start unearthing some of your possessions. So the categories we typically use besides keep, of course, are sell, donate, and dispose. And I'm going to add two more categories. The move elsewhere pile, so how often do we have similar items scattered about in different places around the house? You know, CDs should be with the CD player and not in the kitchen junk drawer. And new light bulbs and extension cords should all be in one place, handy for when you need them. And then the second additional category is the I haven't a clue category. So this, we, us, we tell you to use this category sparingly to avoid derailing your process and momentum of decision-making. So don't get stuck on items that you don't have an, um, you know, a decision on that you're just not sure about. Set them aside and certainly avoid gathering that pile too large, but revisit with fresh set of eyes in a day or so and make your decision. So another rule of thumb is schedule a donation pickup after the day after you've you know, created these piles. I know there have been some challenges that we'll get into with, with uh, charities, but you don't, we don't want you to have to go back through the bags and undo the decisions you've already made. And certainly if we're working with you, 
we can haul away the clothing or light items that same day if that's going to help your process. So that to downsizing tip number five is consider your lifestyle, love the future. And this has been a consistent theme throughout the presentation, right? And the beauty of your lifestyle at Riverwoods Exeter is there's no more maintenance. No one has to get on a ladder and no one has to rake those leaves. So as you're downsizing, don't blame us as if, don't blame us as if we uh, push back on you taking the leaf blower because uh, you're not going to need it. Um, and then how about your good formal china? I challenge you to use it if you're not already. I know I use mine every day. It goes in the dishwasher. The gold band is still intact and I just don't put it in the microwave. And I'm enjoying what had previously been gathering dust in the cabinet. So if it doesn't appeal, if, it, if that doesn't appeal to you, it's time to let it go and allow someone else to enjoy it. Downsizing tip number six, keep your favorite collectibles, but not all of them. Whether it's stamps or Hummels, milk glass, the real joy you got in your collections probably was seeking them out to purchase. We, su we suggest downsizing your collections. So I had a client uh, who had a collection of owl figurines. She had them all over the house. And I asked her how she came to collect them. And she said she mentioned one day to family and friends that she liked owls. And from that day on, she received owl figurines for every birthday, holiday, and so on. And so our client had a lovely uh, circular wood hanging shelf. And I asked her if she'd like to fill that shelf with a sampling of her favorites. And she agreed. So like the Tupperware, we collected all the owls from her house um, and just gathered them on a table. So on that, on that uh, space. And she filled the shelf with her favorites and was so pleased that she had a sampling of her collection and could give away the rest, whether it was to family or trying to sell them or, or, the, or the like. So having, you know, having a sample of your collection is a great conversation starter as you're meeting new people. And they usually, there's usually great stories behind the fun times acquiring these treasures. And stories are a wonderful way to connect and honor your memories. So the same exercise can be applied to your books. Determine the number of bookcases that you want to bring that will fit in your new space and then fill those, those um, bookcases with your favorites. The, Next downsizing tip number seven is take inventory of your clothes. I really love this when we're working with our clients and we ask them if everything in their closet fits them. And we usually get a smirk or a giggle. Um, so many of us are keeping other sizes. You know, I might someday possibly be that size one day, you know, I want to be. So what happens when the clothes, clothing is a size eight and we're a size 10 or 12? We look at those and, 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 and feel guilty. Well, free yourself from it. And the clothes you're wearing today are the clothes that you truly love. And we, we wear about 20% of our clothing. So what can we do? You can apply the one year rule or a six month rule or shorter if you'd like. But every time you use a piece of clothing, turn your hanger around. So after three, six, 12 months, you'll really see what items you're actually wearing. Now take a look at your items under the dry cleaning bags. You know, are you holding on to an item because you paid a lot for it years ago? Just reassess those items. If you can't see them, um, you know, and they're under plastic, chances are you're not, you're not using them. And while styles come and go, that blue blazer that you have may have outdated, outdated lapels or shoulder pads. So, you know, consider moving it along if that bothers you. And anything with, here's my rule of thumb in the closet. If there's anything with dust on it, that's a dead giveaway. Shoes, you know, shoulders uh, of your clothing, good, good uh, indication that you're not using it. And tip number eight, spend extra time in the kitchen. These, uh, the kitchen has been the heart and soul of your home. Um, and it's well worth taking extra time to sort through and select what you are truly using. Remember, your new lifestyle. And many people are getting tripped up with what? 
all those extras. Mm -hmm. We see a lot of small appliances not being used, so it's uh, it's time to share those forward. Uh, I can't tell you how many time uh, I can't tell you how many times a client tells me they need four whisks, and I want I want to challenge anyone to tell me who can use more than two at a time. So mm -hmm. um, you know, or eight pie plates. So unless there's a special need for them, you need to ask yourself, do I really need the duplicates anymore? Downsizing tip number nine, start shredding and recycling. Your shredding on your home shredder can be a huge waste of time on your efficiency if you have a lot of shredding to do. So we suggest, get again, gather all together, see how much you have, and then, you know, it may take you a period of a few days or even weeks, but set aside those banker's box size boxes and fill those up. So if the pile is considerable, there are resources to help. And I'm sure many of you already know this, but, you know, in the spring, there are often many options. There's town shredding events uh, or check with your accountant or financial planner for any free offerings that they may have. Uh, staples. They will take shredding, they'll charge by the pound. Uh, those items, those paper items are placed in a locked uh, bin from Iron Mountain. Um, and so you won't be able to shred those, but for, uh, see that shredding. But for those who need to witness their items being shredded, um, they have mobile shredding companies. Um, I think they're called, it's called Shred It. And then in Salem, uh, Massachusetts, there's uh, Greif Recycling, which was formerly known as North Shore Recycled Fibers. Uh, there's Northeast Record Retention in Hooksit, and I'm sure there are similar ones too on the on the um, on the seacoast. But there's very you know various other places that um, you know few that that have been used before, and we're happy to um, you know happy to take some of those manageable piles for you if that's easier if we're doing a session with you. So a good rule of thumb is that unless it's a permanent life record or taxes, you probably don't need it because much of this is online. And we just, tip number 10 is tell your stories. People want to hear, you know, go down memory lane and share your stories with family and friends. And I encourage you to take photos or video and bring them front and center and then release them. If, that is, if that's what's gonna help you move on from that un unneeded item. So we challenge you to see if you consider bringing, you know, maybe even one plastic bin of, bin of memorabilia with you that you can have to keep them close to you and display them and enjoy them. All right, so where, where does it all go? We've just given you 10 tips and some quick start ideas. So let's address the extra items you're not taking. You know, categories are family, sell, donate, dispose, and haul away. Um, and first of all, you can look to family, but I want to caution you. Uh, do you really think your kids, you know, want all of your stuff? Probably not, because they have their own homes. And I just love this card, too, because it says, one day, son, this will all be yours. <laughs> and it's a full storage unit. And, you know, just do yourself a favor, do your kids a favor, make the decision now, make the decisions now and don't leave it to them and communicate what's important to you. So it does not become their burden. And I would guard against, um, I would guard against taking items that you plan to downsize at your new apartment. It really is a big mistake. It prevents you from having the proper space for the items you are using and it prevents you from truly engaging in your new, new lifestyle at Riverwoods Exeter. You should be enjoying, you know, all that the community life has to offer rather than being stuck in your apartment with unpacked boxes. There's really, there's only so much your apartments will absorb. So make those tough decisions now. Um, don't, don't leave it to, uh, you know, your post move. So let's talk about what is selling. Um, <clears throat> We can certainly try to sell items for you. It's it's going to, I'm going to caution you here because often um, because it adds value to you, it doesn't necessarily translate to monetary value. There's emotional value and there's monetary value and they don't always equal each other. So what is selling? Um, Mid-century modern furniture in excellent condition. What isn't selling is the big brown furniture. 
Big brown furniture, not so much, but the teak chair does still hold some interest. You know, anything unusual. Um, we had actually sold a unicycle one time, a beaver top hat, again, those unusual things. Uh, sterling silver is still selling if you're okay with being melted down um, for the silver, but times have changed. Um, the new generations are going out to home goods and picking up a $12.99 platter, and that's what they're entertaining with. You know, um, generally speaking, you know, gone are the days of polishing silver and bringing out the good stuff. Um, any collections like Lionel Trains um, uh, will still, still sell, but they can't be painted or refurbished. And oddly, nutcrackers have sold. Um, signed sports memorabilia, like Muhammad Ali's framed signed boxers in the lower portion of the screen there. Um, and, you know, if you agree to, to, if we bring in, if we do bring in, um, uh, you know, an antique dealer or a collector, um, if you agree on the sale, you'll get 100% of the proceeds. And when you're selling, for the most part, you're not going to realize a big return from the sale. Selling is just a solution to move your items along so that you can enjoy them, um, so that others can enjoy them, and you don't have to uh, you know, pay for their disposal. So on to donation. Uh, we do have trusted partners, Habitat for Humanity Restore. Um, have been a big go to us. We have a wonderful group on the seacoast. Um, uh, and they, if you have a special charity, please let us know. We're happy to work with them. But we want to ensure that whomever you choose to donate to, that it offers you a solution and it resonates with you per, your personal mission. We don't want to have to throw anything away. Um, we, want to see, we want to see things repurposed. So selling versus donating. Um, I did... I did just want to share what does sell versus um, what, what donates. And it's, um, it really has to be in good condition, anything that you're passing along. Hummels have not held their value, I'm sorry to say. Yadros are better, but there's still a bit of a challenge. Um, and just remember that donation, giving to others can be life-changing to a struggling family, especially in this past year. Jobs and homes have been lost. People have had to start new in towns and, and states where hiring is, is actually happening. So we want to be sure that you know that the team at Riverwoods Exeter doesn't want you to have to go at this alone. You know, ask for help. It is available. Um, we, we know, um, just know that we're here to help, you know, every step of the way or just partial help, your call. We're here to do as much or as little as you'd like. Um, and will become part of your team, not to take over, but to guide the process and be that extra set of hands where you need it. We have a project manager who will assist you and be part of, the, of the new, your new beginnings. Um, we are based out of uh, Charlestown, Mass, uh, but we have uh, project managers up in Exeter and Portsmouth. Um, so with our help, you know, at the end of the pack day, um, or at the end of your move day, your bed will be made and all the boxes will um, are unpacked and items are resettled. Um, all right, and let's move on to our uh, new initiative, uh, WaySafe. And we do have, um, you know, from day one back in, you know, March, April, May, June of last year, we established health and safety protocols and they still remain today very strong. And we're committed to your safety because we're committed to our safety and the safety of our loved ones. Because we are considered essential workers, much of our company has received both doses of vaccine of the vaccine, and we continue to follow protocols of daily temperature taking, mask wearing, hand washing, and social distancing. And please just know that virtual appointments are available as well. Um, if you have a, a, a cell phone or a, a tablet, I can do screenshots as you walk me around the house, or even with a downsizing uh, session, we can we can do those virtually for you, with you. So taking care of you has truly uh, never mer never mer mattered more. So we we are people helping people, and we're here for you. Um, so you can look forward to begin enjoying what really matters most in your life. So here's some contact information for you. And I certainly just wanted to say 
thank you. I know we're going to go to Q and A, but I just wanted to make sure um, I thank uh, Diane, Adele, thank you. Kaylee, your team for having me today. Thank you, thank you, Ellen. That was great, 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 great. So uh, we're ready to take some questions. Um, so we have a question from Judy. Um, do you know some of the local vendors who will take things like family silver? books, large furniture. I would like some money for them as I can't afford to lose out on these items. So, um, so sh local vendors, I'm presuming Judy lives in Hamilton. So you must be looking at the Exeter area. So do you have an answer for that, Ellen? Yes. So the typical process, um, we start with a complimentary visit to your home. Um, in order to just kind of gauge what you do have. At that time, I take some general photos. When you are contracted with us, we'll take some more detailed photographs and email our dealers and just say any interest in viewing. That way, we're not dragging people through your, you know, um, home to, um, you know, to view things, we're kind of doing that pre-work, which is really important. If they are uh, interested, we'll set up an appointment and you can meet with them whether you want us there or not. We'll connect you and, um, and just make sure that you are able to uh, you know, realize some, some revenue. You get 100% of the, of the profit there. You know, to, at that point, it's just between the two of you. So in terms of, in terms of names, you know, I can, we can get together a list if you'd like. Uh, I can get them to Diane. But a lot of our local vendors, you know, um, we have, you know, in our back pocket and are happy to, to uh, work with you with. Um, okay. Um, so someone wants to know if you can do things like rake or yard work here at Exeter. Um, you, we have a garden committee, so you can garden and certainly mm -hmm. um, get into dirt if that's something that you really want to <laughs> do. But our landscaping crew really takes care of all the major work. Um, so you might have to give up that rake. You might have to downsize the rake and maybe, um, but get involved in um, another way that can fulfill that piece of your life that it sounds like you might miss. Um, so is there a question from Helen? Is there a fee for these services? Yes, um, we do charge hourly, but again, it is in that complimentary visit that I will get you an estimate. Everybody is different. Okay. And we do everything from packing to unpacking, downsizing. We have movers. We'll move or we'll or we'll work with your mover of your choice. That initial consult is key because we just have a discussion and just find out what your needs are and where we might add value. Yeah. And that's a big thing because determining whether they, uh, you need someone like Ellen before or after, sometimes right. it's the unpacking that's overwhelming once you've gone through the moving. So yeah, that, right. that would invite anyone who's interested to, to sit down with Ellen and really talk about where you think right. your, your needs, yeah. you know. Hey, um, I'm, I'm originally from New Hampshire. You know, I, I grew up in New Hampshire. So I know that we are hardy uh, do-it-yourselfers. So uh, we're not looking to come in and take over. We're just looking yeah. to become part of your team in whatever way works best for you. That's great. That's great. Um, Janet's asking if Riverwoods has tools you can borrow. Um, probably not. If you had a tool that you needed, our, our, our maintenance crew and landscapers do all of the work or maintenance work. So I don't know that they, they would be a need for a tool. Um, so, you know, I'm going to say that, um, probably not, you know, there's a liability issue with that. We don't know what, you know, how, what you need to do, but we have a maintenance crew that is terrific and a landscaping crew. And certainly, um, they can guide you in anything that, um, anything that you might need. Um, so someone's asking, um, in, of me, can we get floor plans for apartments, including dimensions of windows, coverage, et cetera? Um, you can get the floor plan of the, the basic floor plan um, in terms of measuring cupboards and windows. Uh, that would be something that you would do on your own. You can come with a tape measure and, and, and uh, you know, measure 
uh, so, but we do have a floor plan um, definitely um, for each, each, each unit here at Riverwoods. And we're welcome to share that with you along with some furniture cutouts, which people have found to be very helpful. And you can use those in dealing with, with Ellen too and her staff. Um, so we have a question, let's see, what do you do when your partner wants to keep buying stuff that won't fit into your new lifestyle? Well, that might be an Ask Beth question. I don't know if it's. <laughs> <laughs> we, um, I have to say though, uh, Diane, we did, um, we did have a couple that we were working with a couple of years ago and they just, they weren't getting anywhere together because they, they just had too much history together and they were kind of at each other. So my, my colleague and I went in separately. I worked with him. She worked, you know, with, with her. And, um, you know, while we can't prevent any purchasing, it just, it does help to just kind of reset with a, with a third party, if you will. And um, because as I said a little earlier, there is only so much that an apartment will absorb. You know, if, if we've, you know, if, if, if we've exhausted, you know, exhausted all the space in a closet or a kitchen cabinet, and we've got boxes to unpack, we can't unpack them to a place that we need to make sure that you are safe, uh, that your pathways are, um, you know, uh, passable. And we, we can't, you know, be in good conscience, you know, again, we want to make sure that we're taking care of Riverwoods Exeter as well as our clients and not leaving you in, in, in any danger or uh, fear of tripping, you know, in, a, in an apartment. So very important to, to consider what you're taking. So again, we're, we're not marriage counselors, but we can certainly help give you a... <laughs> <laughs> and usually having a, a third party for... can, can add some, some good light and perspective on some of those right. things. Right. Um, it's not easy. So, you know, you'll find a balance um, right. once you decide based on the size of apartment, if you, if mm -hmm. you are planning on coming here, what's going to be best. Um, okay. So a question about does Riverwoods itself take any books? What are your libraries like? So, you know, everyone has books they want to donate. I think Alan might have mentioned that we, you know, um, we buy too many books and then we, you know, we then we just have them, you know, and I'm guilty of that too. But from working here, I can tell you right now, I use my local library all the time because I hear consistently people have you know, reams of lists of books. So to answer your question, we have three great libraries. However, we have a library committee and we have a uh, budget for new books. So we would invite you to share the list of your books with us and they would go to our library committees and they would determine if they would take any of them. But I wouldn't hold out for that. If you have another resource for, uh, for your books, um, and you have lots of them, then I suggest that you start working on that now. Mm -hmm. um, what about outdoor grills? Um, we do not, you cannot have outdoor grills here. Uh, personal grills are not permitted. We do have, um, we do have gas grills in our common areas, a few in our common areas, um, but, um, and that, you know, our, our kitchen staff would use, but grills are not permitted. Um, okay, what do you do with china cabinet and matching buffet with claw feet, large pieces? Are there really antique dealers out there from Patty? You know, there, there are, I have to, I have to take a look at it and, and again, gauge that interest through, you know, you could, you can even take, take photos and send to a local uh, dealer if you'd like, but that's what we would, we would do. Um, and as I said earlier, you know, unless it's, you know, kind of a diamond in the rough or something um, that is unique. Um, unfortunately, I hate to be the bearer of bad news. It's, it's, it's very difficult to sell those items. Um, and in most cases, we end up donating them. But again, everyone's different. I'd like, you know, I don't want to cast a, um, you know, a, a blanket, a, you know, a general blanket over your particular piece. Okay. But the secondary market is very, very difficult right now. Yeah, yes, yeah. Um, so um, someone's asking, uh, how much time do, does one have after an apartment at Riverwoods is available before you move in? So typically it's about a 60 day. You know, you come in, you look at the apartment, 
you have a, a health assessment and you know requalify, and then you sit down with our um, move-in you know coordinator Chrissy Cady who has uh, our standard personalizations, and then once you make those decisions, then we put together a schedule. So. 60-ish days is usually about the time that you have before your apartment's ready, give and take. It could be a little bit longer. Um, can you do renovations? We don't uh, suggest any, you can't do anything structural. Uh, typically you can do a bookcase. Um, so we can talk a little more about that. Um, no major renovations are allowed. Um, we think the choices that we have now, our standard choices are attractive. Most people like them. So, um, so everything is replaced and brand new when you move in based on our standard choices. Um, speaking, uh, thinking of collectibles, specifically Hummels, which I now have no value. What can I do with them? Throwing them away feels wrong, yet right. folks really don't want them these days. That's from Nancy. Yeah, Nancy, we can donate those. Oh, good, that's yeah. great. We can, we can definitely donate the Hummels. Oh, that's great, yeah. that's great. So you don't have a lot of storage space here, outside storage space. I liken our storage space to a, a, to a phone booth. Um, so they're about you know uh, eight feet high, three and a half feet wide, and four feet deep. So um, so you need to downsize. Right. <laughs> you, that's basically for luggage, holiday things. Yes. You know. Um, you know, but really it's not meant to be in like some of the pictures Alan showed where you just shove everything in there because you'll never go in there and you'll never yeah. get to anything that's way behind. Right. So we, again, going back to Alan's advice, start early, look at things that you don't use, let go of them, um, because bringing too much is, um, is, is really difficult. We've seen... Many people who have brought way too much and they're overwhelmed with boxes and mm -hmm. things go out. So we really suggest that you work with someone like Alan or a SAP or, or us, the floor plan, mm -hmm. and really decide to take what's, I always say, you know, most of you are coming from homes that are large. I always say, well, now you're going to be a little more contained. So surround yourself with your favorite pieces, mm -hmm. you know, the favorite piece, the couch that you might not have even noticed when you were walking through the den or, yeah. you know, <laughs> pieces that we don't even, I even in my own house, I walk through yeah. my living room upstairs to my loft and I think, That's right. I don't know what I sat on my couch, you know, so yeah. we all have our favorite places in our homes that right. we hunker down to. And most often it's a small space. So, um, so think about the things that you really love and that you enjoy, the furniture that is most comfortable to you, and um, and and think about bringing those. So, um, great points, uh, Diane. You know, so can you change the paint? Yes, you can. So there's a charge if you don't use our standard, but you certainly can change the. Um, can you change the? Um, there is bike storage. We have bike racks. In fact, Riverwoods does have three bikes on each campus that you can use if you don't want to bring your own. So we do have the bike racks. And there's also some space in some of the garages. But, you know, a lot of people now, the next generation of people are coming with kayaks and bikes and, you know, equipment that wasn't coming 25 years ago. So... Um, I think at some point, Riverwoods, you know, everything has sort of been on hold with COVID, obviously, but I would say at some point, um, we're probably going to talk about having some kind of a storage shed for, for bikes. So, and there are some people that have rolled them into the, the storage space, not in the cage itself, but in the common area. So right now we don't have lots of them uh, owned by residents, but, um, but we have bikes here. Um, so um, let's see, did I get all the questions? I think, I think we answered all the questions, Alan. I know and, one thing, um, one thing so, I did want to mention for those who are out of state, um, Wayforth has offices from New England all the way down to Florida. 
if we don't have a, a an office close enough to you, um, you know, we're down in Connecticut, we're down in the Carolinas, we're down in Florida. Um, you know, we are also members of the National Association of Senior Move Managers. And we have been working with colleagues for the better part of well, over a decade now, 12 years. And so through our conferences, through our work that we do with our, our fellow move managers across the country, we can find someone for you. We just enter in the zip code. Um, and you can even go on the NASM website, again, NASMM, the National Association of Senior Move Managers. And you can um, plug in, it'll you just click on find a senior move, find a move manager, plug in your zip code, and it will give you a number of them that are close to you. Oh, that's great. Um, so that, that, and right now, I think I have eight um, job shares going. I've, we've got people coming in and going out from, from all different locations across the country. Um, so just know that we can, you know, get you those resources, whether you need our help on this end or not. Um, but we just want to make sure that you feel supported. The other thing, too, is um, on this slide here, my direct line is the 978-764-4137. And that is my email there. So I know there's, there's other there's, you know, corporate numbers there, but the, um, the two under my name are, are going to get to me more directly. That's great. That's great. Um, so terrific. Well, thank you, Alan. A couple um, little reminders um, on April 6th, we're, um, we're having a panel. We have four residents that are going to talk about um, what the first year was like. And for these residents, it was very different for most first years because of COVID. So we invite you to um, join that um, online workshop. You can register um, on our website, we're also excited that we can now uh, do tours uh, for prospective people. So we have opened up. So if anyone is on that has not um, been here or would like to come here, um, we are happy to um, happy to you know we invite you to call us and arrange to come and visit. Um, so. Um, I guess we have one question here. I just pulled up um, stamp albums. No, do you know what to do with them? Do you know what to do with stamp al albums? You know, um, I'm not the expert, so I, okay. I, uh, I would have to bring in mine, but I will say okay. three right. months ago, we had some clients with a coin collection and I, I, I don't know one coin from another, but I okay. offered $45,000 to our client. Wow. Yeah. Okay, and someone's asking if you have someone near Camden, Maine. Uh, we do. We, how far up is that? It's mid coast. So, mid -coast. yeah, like Rockport, you yeah. know. Um, if, if we can't, we will get a resource. Okay, great, great, yeah. great. Okay, I think that's it. Um, thank you all. Thank you, Ellen, for a wonderful presentation. Thank you, Diane. And Thank you all for taking the time today to um, learn how to get rid of the stuff. So um, the next rainy day, I'm not suggesting you go out today. It's beautiful out today, but <laughs> the next rainy day we have, maybe open that junk drawer. I'm inspired. I'm going to do my and, <laughs> um, and start getting rid of stuff because it will really make you feel good and make you feel like you're moving forward whatever forward is for you. So um, thank you. You've got Ellen's information. You've got Riverwood's information. Wishing you all a good week. And for those of you that celebrate Easter or Passover, wishing you a happy Easter and Passover. And thank you.